Welcome to Transporter. My name is David Hill. I write product documentation at Connected Data. Today's topic is, you've been invited to join a Transporter organization. Now that you've received this email, what do you do with it? So today we're going to look at five topics. First, we are going to accept the Transporter organization invitation. Next, we will look at installation of desktop software for both Mac and Windows. Third, we'll look at the Transporter menu on your desktop. Fourth, we'll look at the Transporter folder and its contents. And finally, we'll visit the Transporter management website. Today's demonstration represents a user who owns two computers, both a Mac and a PC. So we'll install the desktop software on each and log the same user into each computer. So we'll start by looking at our email. And here we have a fresh invitation from our organization administrator. This will take us to the sign-up screen. So you'll see that your email address has already been populated. In this instance, our user's name is Adrian Porras. So we'll fill this out and give it a password and agree to the terms. Here we see some usage tips for the Transporter Management website, but we're going to talk about that separately in a few moments. So for now, we're going to skip this. On this screen, the first decision you need to make is whether you want your name to be searchable for other users to discover you on the website. If you want to be searchable by name, leave this top box checked. If you want to be searchable only by exact match email address, uncheck this box. We'll try that with this user. And if you want to enter your city, which helps people who find you confirm that they found the right person, then you can just enter your city or some other locality here. In the section below labeled account image, you can add an optional thumbnail from social services such as Facebook, Instagram, Gravatar, or Twitter. For now, we'll just click next. This screen introduces you to a couple of default settings for your account. The first one, which is selected by default, means that it, when you accept invitations to new shared folders, that those folders will sync to your computer. If you have a flash-based notebook with constrained storage, you might want to uncheck that box so that shared folders don't automatically come down to your computer. That's really a personal choice. The second option, use direct file transfer for links, refers to our two different styles of links. Our original style of links are known as direct links, meaning that the files reside only on your transporter. This is a more secure form of linking files, but it requires that the recipient download one of two different pieces of helper software. Our new standard link style allows you to place your files on our secure servers from which your recipients may download the file directly without having to install any additional software. For now, we are going to leave both of these settings at default and click Next. When we reach the screen, you should see the software start to automatically download as it is now. Once we have the software, we can click Next to go to the next screen. At this point, it's telling us that we should stop and install the desktop software. So let's go to our Downloads folder. Open the disk image. Give it a moment to verify. Then we will drag the Transporter Desktop application into the Applications folder. Once it has copied, then we can double click on the Applications folder to go there and launch the Transporter Desktop application. We'll start by clicking Next. Review the terms and conditions and click Agree. Now we enter the email address at which we were invited to join the Transporter organization. Once we've entered our user account, we have the opportunity to change the Transporter folder location if we want to, such as to an external USB hard drive. In this case, we're going to leave it at its default location, which is at the top level of your OS X home directory, and click Next. Now we just have to click Install and enter the administrator password for our OS X computer. Mind you that this is the OS X password and not the Transporter password. And restart the finder. That's to facilitate our custom icons. And now we're done. We'll click the blue arrow to dismiss it and close this window. Now we can see two important things have happened. The transporter folder has been added to our computer. It now appears in the sidebar in the finder. And within it, we see the transporter library, which means that the software is already active and running. We also have the transporter menu up here. Just to clean up our desktop and finish with the website, we'll go back to our web browser for a moment and click Next. Here, it's going to prompt you to review our quick start guide, which is this checkbox here. If we click Done, that will open. This is actually a copy of Knowledge Base Document 365, which you can find online on our support site. So we'll just close that for now. And we're just going to go ahead and close the browser window to get it out of the way. Close our extra finder windows. And we can actually unmount the disk image that the software is on just to get that out of the way as well. So let's start by looking at the transporter menu. On a Mac, the transporter menu is located in your menu bar. And we'll look at the major features. Here at the top, you always have a status message, such as this computer is up to date. At other times, it may reflect alternate statuses, such as sync is paused or that files are transferring. Next, we should point out that this is the version of the transporter menu that you see if you are a member of a business class transporter organization. Certain hardware-specific features, which are controlled only by your administrator, have been removed from this version of the menu. 
If you owned your own transporter, you would see a couple of additional options in this menu. That's why sometimes when you look at our documentation, you see a different version of the menu with an extra couple of lines in it. You really don't need to worry about that if they're missing. It just means you're a member of a transporter organization. So let's look at some of the little shortcuts that are available here in the transporter menu. At the top, we have a shortcut to the transporter folder itself. So if you forget where your folder is, you can always come right here and open it directly in the finder. It will also be placed in the finder sidebar if you have the sidebar revealed. Let's go back to the menu for just a moment. We have a sync status indicator, which will tell you when files are syncing with this computer. If you have files going up or down, you can always come here and look to see what the current status is. Here you have shortcuts to your shared folders. This is a brand new user, so there are no shared folders. But once you join a shared folder, it will appear here as a shortcut, and choosing the folder here would take you straight into that folder in the finder, just as with the transporter folder shortcut above. To preview the next item, we're going to actually copy some files. Here's some files that I would like to have on my transporter, so I'll copy them into my transporter folder, and they'll begin syncing immediately, as you can tell right there. Once we have activity, we should be able to look here in the transporter menu, and we see the activity happening. We see that the recently changed file list is updating continuously as the files copy. So you can always see your most recently modified files right here in this list. Next, we'll look at more options. The first option in the list allows you to pause syncing. This is useful if, for instance, you're connected via a cellular connection and you need to temporarily save on data. If you select this, you'll see your status uh, go to paused in the menu. And uh, you notice you get the grayed out menu symbol with the pause indicator. And you can resume syncing just by rolling over and clicking right here. So once I do that, you'll see the file start to update again here. And let's look back at some additional options. The next choice is preferences. The preferences screen is very important because that's where you control some powerful options having to do with special folders, selective sync, and your account. For instance, by clicking on account, you can see the actively logged in user and you can sign that user out and log in a different user if you need to. We have several knowledge base articles dedicated to these topics and we'll put some of the numbers up here on screen so that you can review those at your leisure. And for now, we're going to close this and look at some of the additional options. Next we have check for updates, which is fairly self-explanatory. You can use this to check for software updates. Uh, I'm on the latest version, so I'm not going to find anything new. Uh, next we'll look at the About Transporter Desktop dialog. This is actually really useful because this is where you can get diagnostics if and when necessary. Again, we have knowledge base articles about this as well, so we'll close this for now. We just want to point out where it is. And coming back here, uh, one of the most important things here is a shortcut to our transporter management website. And as a convenience factor, uh, you'll be automatically logged in here when you go to the site via the menu if you're not already logged in. So again, this is a brand new user. This user does not yet have any shared folders and doesn't really have any new invitations or activity, but we can look at the major features of the management website regardless. Let's start here at the top. This is the Messages tab. This is where invitations from any other users who invite you to shared folders would appear, and you would accept those invitations. We'll see that happen in a different video later. Next, we have the Shared Folders tab. This is again where you would see a list of shared folders. We'll actually create a shared folder here. I do have to point out that you can create shared folders on your desktop as well, so we'll do one each way. Let's say we'll leave this checkbox selected. This allows guest access for which we have a knowledge base article. This just means that users who don't have a transporter can join folders if you invite them to. If you uncheck this box, only people who own a transporter or who are members of a transporter organization will be allowed to join in the folder. So now that we've created a shared folder, we have one on our list. And let's, get, let's look at the other way we can do this. We'll go back to the finder, go to the transporter folder. We will make a new folder. And we'll put something in it, like this photograph. And we'll share the folder using our transporter contextual menu which will in turn take us back to the transporter management website to invite users to the folder. For instance, I can invite our administrator Douglas at his personal account and submit. And now when I look at the folder membership, I can see myself, Adrian Porras in this example, and Douglas who I just invited. If we go back to the folders list, we will actually see both folders, the one that we created on the administration website and also the one that we created on our desktop. It doesn't matter where you create it, they'll both show up here. Next, we'll go to the Groups tab. 
This is where you can see any groups that have been set up by your organization administrator. This is pretty much like any other user group model. Uh, your administrator can put people in these groups, and then if you want to invite a group of people to a folder rather than having to invite them individually, you just invite the group. If you need to be reminded who's in the group, you can just drill down into the groups and see the group membership like that. Next, we'll go to our links page. So if you've created any links, this is where uh, you can see a list of your active links, and you can also change the link type or certain other link properties. So let's take a moment and look at this. Let's go back to our transporter folder, and let's link one of our files. So let's pick one of these JPEGs. We're going to use our transporter contextual menu, create a link, and copy, it'll copy to our clipboard in case we wanted to email it to somebody. But at this point, we're looking at the website. We're more concerned with the administration of the link than the link itself. So let's refresh. And now we can see that uh, we've created a link. When it says link being processed, this means that you are looking at a standard link and that it's being uploaded to our server so that your recipients can download it. To the right, you have the settings button. So let's look at what's there. Here you can copy the URL to the clipboard. So if you didn't get it before, uh, you can always come back here and get it again. Next we have the link options. This is where you can change the link type. In our standard link, the file is uploaded to our secure servers and the recipient gets a link, uh, as with many other services, which they can simply download. They don't need to install any helper software. This method is a bit less secure in that the file does leave your own hardware, but it's much easier to use for your recipient. This is perfect for any files that are uh, lower in security where that's just not a concern. For times that security is a concern, we offer the direct style of link. When you choose the direct link style, the file will live only on your transporter and will never go to our servers. If you would like the link to expire after a certain amount of time, you can just click on the field here, get a calendar, choose a day, and then hit submit. Now you may be wondering uh, how to change the default setting for your link type. That's really easy. You just come up here to your account settings. And if you would like to always have the direct link style, then you go to your account preferences and click use direct file transfer for links right here and submit. Let's return to the links page for just a moment and look at the settings button again. And we'll review the link access information screen. This just shows you who has downloaded your link. Uh, so right now it's at zero because we just created it. But here you would normally see a list of IP addresses of everyone who has uh, downloaded the link. To see more than the last 25, your organization administrator has to pull the system logs. So let's close this. And the final option is just to delete the link when you're tired of it or you want to get rid of it. If you don't want to wait for it to expire, you can just delete it right here. And there we go. Uh, let's look at a couple more settings under your account. So here you can change your contact information if you want to. Uh, you can change your name, your address, your city, state, zip code. You cannot, however, change your user short name. That is a permanent name to your account. And to change that, you'd actually have to create a new account. So here we can look at some email settings. This is where you go if you need to change the email address on your account. The procedure for this is pretty simple. Say, for instance, I wanted to get my connected data email address off of this and substitute in a different one. I would add the second address, hit add email. I would change the other one to primary. There would actually be a button here that says make primary. And then I would be allowed to remove uh, this address. For now, we don't need to do that. We're going to hit done. So now let's go back to account preferences for just a moment. We were here just a minute ago to change the link style. Uh, it's important to note that this is basically where you can change all the default settings that you had the opportunity to set during the initial signup. These are the exact same, same things we discussed before. You can just come back here to change them at any time. So we'll hit cancel now. And this is where you can change your password. One thing that's kind of an important nuance here is this checkbox that says for sign in on all transporter apps. You would check that, for instance, if you had lost possession of a phone or laptop and you wanted to force the app to log out as quickly as possible. For now, we'll hit cancel. And with that, we've looked at all the major features of the Transporter Management website. So let's log out and go to our Windows computer. Now that we're on the Windows computer, we need to download and install Transporter desktop software. To do that, I've entered the URL for our support website, which is support.filetransporter.com. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and download the Windows software right here. I'm going to save that to the desktop just to have it there. And we'll give that a moment to download. Now that we have the Transporter Desktop Installer, we'll open it up. We will allow it to modify the computer, and we'll just go through the wizard here. We need to accept the terms, click Next. 
next again. We need to leave this alone. This is not anything you ever want to change. This is the installation location for the app. There is, however, a different dialog where you can change the location of your transporter folder. We'll see that in a moment. Finish. And we got to reboot the computer. Now we need to click Next. And this is where we enter our user account information. Once we log in, we're going to see the same contents that we uploaded to the transporter from our Mac start to sync down to the Windows computer. And click Done. So here's our new transporter folder. This message is just telling us where to find the transporter menu in our taskbar. There it is. We'll look at that in just a moment. We'll close this message and just observe that our files are coming down already from the transporter. And if we go back to our Mac, go to our transporter folder here, and we can even add in some more stuff and watch that come down as well. And while that's going on, let's look at the menu for a moment. The transporter menu here contains pretty much the same features that you see on the Mac side. They're just arranged differently and it has more of a Windows style. So here we have our shortcut of the transporter folder, our sync activity. Here we have our shortcuts to shared folders, a shortcut to the management website, just like on the Mac. And here we have the same options. And let's start by looking at preferences. Again, it looks a bit different from the Mac, but all the same stuff is here. You have your account change option here. You have uh, notifications, the ability to change your transporter folder, which is actually kind of hidden on the Mac side. We could talk about that some other time. In the Windows uh, app, you have the option right there. And here you have your special folders and selective sync, just like on the Mac. Another thing to point out under more options is the about window. And you have the same diagnostics link right here. So let's look at the transporter folder for a moment. Just like on the Mac side, we have the transporter library. This contains things which are stored only on the transporter, which are not synced to the computer. We haven't done any of that yet, so there's nothing in there. And at the top level of our transporter folder is where we have our private sync folders, such as this one and this one, as well as our shared folders, which are clearly marked as such with the sharing icon over the folder. And the transporter folder has been added to favorites automatically. And with that, we have accepted a transporter organization invitation and reviewed all of the major features of the desktop software. To review, we have accepted the invitation from our organization administrator. We followed that to the transporter management website where we confirmed and finished creating our account. We installed the desktop software on both a Mac and a Windows PC. We examined the transporter menu. We looked at all its features. We've looked at the transporter folder, and we've actually done some other stuff, like we've begun syncing files, we've created a shared folder, and we've even created some links and changed their style. So there you have it, a very quick tour of high-level major transporter features from a user perspective. Thank you for watching.